based on the previous concepts what we learnt in our antennas, we will try to solve few problems. Problem 1. A hedgian dipole of length lambda by 50 is located at the origin. If a point P is located at a distance R from the origin, then what value of R the point will be in radiation zone? Option A, R is equals to 2 lambda by 5. Option B, R is equals to lambda by 5. Option C, both A and B. And option D, none of the above. Now, observe the solution for this simple problem that a hedgian dipole is given with a length of lambda by 50, then we are supposed to calculate at which distance a particular point P will be in radiation zone. So, just recollect the concept of different zones around the antenna. What are different zones around the antenna? We have a reactive near field that is a very, very nearer to our uh, antenna and a radiation near field, radiation near field will have just a starting radiation, but still it is uh, reactive that there will be no a particular uh, criteria to observe the radiation in that one that will be abruptly changes. After a, a, a particular distance that will be treated as the far field, in that far field the radiation is completely independent of uh, many disturbances and it is directly proportional to 1 by r or 1 by r square as per our uh, antenna. Right. So, in most of the cases it is uh, directly proportional to 1 by r. So, what we do is we will go to the far field region for measurement of any component of an antenna. Now, what is the boundary for that one? That is r must be greater than or equals to 2 d square by lambda where d is the largest dimension of the antenna. Here we are supposed to calculate the distance. So, the solution for this problem is purely depend upon that particular formula that is r is greater than or equals to 2 d square by lambda that we are supposed to calculate from which uh, point or at uh, what is the boundary between our near field and far field, where d is the largest dimension. Here, the largest dimension is the length that is lambda by 50. So, the minimum value of r is r is equals to instead of d, I will substitute lambda by 50 whole square divided by lambda that 2 lambda square divided by 50 50 c is 2500. So, and a lambda is also there, lambda lambda will be cancelled which is equals to just lambda by 1250. So, whenever we have an antenna, let us take this is the antenna that what we have and from the distance of lambda by 1250, everything can be treated as far field. This is the far field that what we have whenever an antenna is there. So, this is the antenna and after distance of this lambda by 1250, everything can be treated as far field. Now, observe the options that what we have. The options what we have are all obviously greater than this lambda by 1250. In the option A, we have a value that is greater than this lambda by 1250. In option B also, we have another value that is greater than this lambda by 1250. So, the points what we are going to mention are obviously in the far field region. So, here clearly the answer the both A and B will be in that far field region. So, option C is correct answer. Problem 2. A certain antenna is used to radiate a 0.2 gigahertz signal to a satellite in space. Given the radiation resistance of the antenna is 31.6 ohms, the antenna is options are half wave dipole, option B, quarter wave dipole, option C, one fifth wave dipole and option D, none of the above. Now, observe the solution for this problem. What is the data given to us? A particular antenna is operating at a frequency of 0.2 kHz to transmit the signal to a satellite uh, for a free space communication and it has a radiation resistance of 31.6 ohms, then what will be the possible length of our antenna? Here you are supposed to collect the radiation resistance topic. So, what is radiation resistance? It is a hypothetical resistance which is uh, generating or uh, which is uh, delivering a power same as our antenna. So, if uh, whenever we are replacing our antenna in the circuitry, this radiation resistance will come into the picture. So, what is the basic uh, formula for our radiation resistance? To get the solution, we are supposed to get the equation of radiation resistance. So, that is uh, clearly for a hedgian dipole in most of the cases, this is only the formula that what we will use. So, try to remember this one. This is 80 pi square, the differential length of the antenna divided by lambda whole square. This is the equation for radiation resistance. Already, this is uh, given in our slides. So, now what we are supposed to calculate is this length. Since the radiation resistance is given, substitute instead of uh, RR 31.6, which is equals to 80 pi square dl by lambda whole square. Now, 31.6 is equals to 80 pi square dl by lambda whole square. Just rearrange this equation to get this dl. Then what we will get here? dl square is equals to 
31.6 into lambda square this lambda square comes to this side divided by 80 pi square then what is dl here dl is equals to square root of 31.6 into lambda square divided by this is 80 pi square this is also 80 pi square after simplification of this one this lambda square uh, will comes out as a lambda here and after simplification of this particular constant approximately we will get this one as lambda by 5. So, in the options what we have it is a half wave uh, dipole half wave dipole means lambda by 2 a quarter wave dipole quarter wave dipole means lambda by 4 and one fifth wave dipole that is nothing but the lambda by 5 and none of the above is our uh, last option among all these one fifth of the wavelength that what we have right that is why it is called as a one fifth wave dipole. So, option C is correct here. Problem 3 the input power of a certain antenna with an efficiency of 95 percent is 0 0.8 watt. If the antenna has maximum radiation intensity of 1 watt per steradian then its directivity will be options are option A 5.26 option B 16.53 option C 0 0.76 and option D 9.55. Now, observe the solution for this problem. So, before that just you observe what is the data given to us? The efficiency of the, anten uh, efficiency of the antenna is given as 95 percent, the power transmitted is 0 0.8 watt and the maximum intensity is 1 watt per steradian and we require directivity of the antenna. So, what is the formula for directivity? The directivity of antenna is defined as the maximum radiation intensity in a particular direction to the average radiation intensity. So, in the data the maximum average intensity is given as or radiation intensity is given as 1. So, we are supposed to calculate the average intensity radiation intensity. So, what is the formula for average radiation intensity u average is equals to. So, this can be obtained using the data given only right. So, u average intensity uh, uh, is equals to the power radiated divided by 4 pi. So, how much power is radiated we are supposed to observe in the data that is not available. So, we are supposed to calculate this power radiated again. So, the power radiated is equals to the power radiated is equals to power transmitted multiplied with the efficiency of the antenna. So, how much power is being radiated is purely depend upon the efficiency of our antenna and it is given as power transmitted into efficiency. What is the power transmitted? 0.8 watt multiplied with the efficiency of antenna is 95 percent corresponds to 0.95. So, after substitution of this p radiation here you will get the average intensity radiation intensity then what is the formula for our d. So, d is equals to instead of u max I can substitute 1 divided by average uh, radiation intensity average radi radiation intensity is equals to p t into eta which is nothing but 0 0.8 into 0 0.95 divided by 4 pi. So, after simplification of this one it is approximately we will get 16.53 it is not in decibels it is a direct value 16.53 the answer. So, in our option 16.53 is available in which option option B. So, option B is correct for this problem. So, next problem problem 4 maximum electric field strength radiated by an antenna is 6 millivolt per meter and measured at 40 kilometers from the antenna. If the antenna radiates a total power of 100 kilowatt then the directivity is options given are like this option a minus 2.02 db option b 9.6 db option c 0 0.0096 db and option d minus 20.18 db. Now, observe the solution for this problem what we have to do is we have to calculate the directivity. So, using this data we are supposed to calculate the directivity for that the directivity equation is the same as our previous one which is equals to simply directivity is equals to 4 pi u max uh, divided by power radiated. So, this is the formula that what I am considering or uh, simply the same formula can be uh, taken as 4 pi u max divided by power average instead of power radiated I am supposed to consider the power average. So, here what I have to do is initially I have to calculate the average power using the data given to us. So, what is the average power? So, p average is equals to. So, simply we have a relation between our uh, average power using our pointing vector it is a half e cross h star. So, this is the formula that what we have for the calculation of average power using our pointing vector. Now, what is e here? So, the electric field intensity which is given as a 6 millivolt per meter. 
So, sub shoot here, then what about the h? So, we have a relation between E and H again. So, E by H is equals to eta. Since we are considering magnitude here, we can consider that particular formula that instead of this E cross H, I can write half E square by eta, where eta is the intrinsic impedance of our free space, simply 120 pi is the answer for that one. So, which is equals to just E square divided by 2 into 120 pi. So, substitute our 6 millivolts here and get P average, then we will get the P average here. Right. From the P average, we will get the U max again. So, what is U max? So, U max is equals to R square multiplied with P average. So, just consider the distance. R is nothing but the distance. Instead of R, we can write D square. No problem. So, this R square can be written as D square. So, U max is equals to just a distance of square P average. So, the major step in this one is calculation of the p average. If you calculate this p average, then that will be useful here as well as in u max also. After substitution of this d as 40 kilometer, the calculated average power intrinsic impedance eta, then simply the directivity can be directly obtained as 0 0.0096. But here clearly observe the entire answer is given in decibels. So, what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to convert this one into decibels. How to convert this one into decibels? D in decibels is equals to 10 log base 10 0 0.0096. This is the answer after simplification of this one. The uh, simplified one is available in option D. Problem 5. A quarter wave monopole antenna is operating at a frequency f is equals to 25 megahertz. The length of antenna will be dash in meters. So, what is the problem given to us? A quarter wave monopole is operating at a frequency of 25 megahertz. Then what is the possible or probable length of our quarter wave monopole? So, first of all, what is a quarter wave monopole? Clearly remember that the word quarter wave, half wave always indicates uh, that the length of the uh, antenna that quarter wave means a quarter of the wavelength, half wave, half of the wavelength, right. So, a quarter wave monopole always indicates that the length of the uh, monopole is lambda by 4, right. So, what we are supposed to do is just you are supposed to calculate this lambda. So, how you can calculate lambda using our f? Lambda is equals to c by f which is equals to 3 into 10 power 8 divided by, so f is 25 into 10 power 6. So, 3 into 10 power 8 is nothing but simply 300 divided by 25, 300 divided by 25 is 12 meter. So, the value of lambda is 12 meter. Now, what is the length of our antenna? Length is equals to as it is quarter wave lambda by 4, lambda by 4 is nothing but 12 divided by 4 simply it is 3 meter. So, the length of our antenna is simply 3 meters that this is the answer that what you are supposed to write. The answer is 3 meter. Next problem. Problem 6. A vertical antenna of length 7.5 meter is operating at a frequency of 2 megahertz. The radiation resistance of antenna is. Now, observe the solution. It is a very simple problem that the length of our antenna is given to us, a vertical antenna given to us. Vertical antenna is nothing but a dipole antenna or monopole antenna, whatever it may be, a straight wire antenna. It is operating at a frequency of 2 megahertz. We require the radiation resistance of that particular antenna. So, what is the formula for radiation resistance? We have a uniform formula, unique formula 80 pi square dl by lambda whole square. So, just a substitution of the parameters is required here in this particular problem. So, simply substitute the parameters that what we have 80 into pi square. What is the length of our antenna? Length of our antenna is 7.5 meter divided by now, we require lambda. So, what is lambda? Lambda is equals to c by f. Directly, I am writing here c is 3 into 10 power 8. Since this length is given in meters, I will consider this c in meters divided by f. f is nothing but the frequency of operation that is 2 into 10 power 6. So, a very simple one that substitution of this uh, parameter, all these parameters will give you see the answer 80 pi square dl lambda. Lambda is nothing but c by f. Simplify this one using a calculator, then what you will get is approximately 1.97 ohms. So, the radiation resistance of our antenna is 1.97 ohms. This is the answer. Right. Problem 7. A dipole antenna radiating at 100 megahertz is fed from a 60 ohm transmission line matched to the source. What will be the length in meters of the dipole 
that matches the line impedance at the signal frequency. Now, observe the solution. This is a little bit tricky problem that what he has given is an antenna is there that antenna is connected to a uh, transmission line with characteristic impedance of 60 ohms. So, so imagine and try to draw the what is the figure. This is a transmission line that what we have ignore the length or uh, remaining characteristics except this characteristic impedance that a 60 ohm transmission line is there. For this 60 ohm transmission line as a load we are connecting an antenna right. Now, we require a perfect matching between the antenna and transmission line that is a condition that what he has given uh, so for the operating frequency. So, what is the impedance of our antenna for a perfect matching that what he asked that the radiation resistance is asked. As I said the radiation resistance is nothing but the hypothetical resistance which can be used instead of an antenna that is whenever it is required to replace in a circuit here this is a circuit here what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to connect the antenna instead of that antenna I will connect an impedance that impedance is nothing but the radiation resistance. So, for this entire antenna I will calculate the radiation resistance and that radiation resistance must match with the transmission line. So, if it is matching obviously what is the value of that one the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So, indirectly he has given that the radiation resistance of our antenna must be equals to 60 ohm for this what is the length of the antenna which is required right. So, simply consider the formula for this one. So, a 60 ohm is equals to what is the formula for radiation resistance 80 pi square d l divided by lambda whole square. Now, once again we have a lambda here the operating frequency is there. So, what you do is just try to calculate the lambda. Now, lambda is equals to so 3 into 10 power 8 the answer was uh, asked in meters. So, I am taking it in meters divided by frequency is 100 megahertz 100 megahertz means 100 into 10 power 6. So, in simply it is 3 meter. Now, substitute 3 meter here that directly I am writing the DL equation DL is equals to square root of 60 into instead of lambda square you can write 9 divided by 80 pi square. So, this is the required length. So, after simplification of this one how much you will get approximately you will get 0 0.827 meter. So, this is the length of our antenna if you are considering the length of antenna as 0 0.827 meter then the radiation resistance will be equals to the 60 ohms. Then definitely there will be a perfect matching between the transmission line and antenna. So, for this particular problem the length of our antenna is 0 0.827 meter. So, this is the answer. Problem 8 the radiation pattern of an antenna is in spherical coordinates is given by u of theta is equals to cos power 4 theta where 0 less than or equals to theta less than or equals to pi by 2. The directivity of the antenna is here the options are given like this option A 10 dB, option B 12.6 dB, option C 11.5 dB and option D 18 dB. Now, observe the solution for this one that the radiation intensity pattern is given to us for a particular antenna the radiation intensity pattern is cos power 4 data that is given in spherical coordinate system we are supposed to calculate D. So, directly we have a formula for this one. So, for the calculation of D we have a formula the maximum radiation intensity to the average radiation intensity. So, if you know the maximum radiation intensity and if you know the average radiation intensity just you can take the direct uh, uh, division of these two right. For that one what I do is initially I will try to observe u max what will be the maximum radiation intensity from this particular equation. The equation which is given to us is u of theta which is nothing but cos power 4 theta that is cos theta whole, whole power 4. So, what is the maximum value of this particular function since it is a sinusoidal uh, function or cos function the maximum value is always 1. Now, we are supposed to calculate the average radiation intensity. What is the average radiation intensity formula? You can calculate average radiation intensity using this formula which is equals to 1 by 4 pi. So, the double integral that is one is for theta another one is phi u of theta sin theta d theta d phi. Just by using this formula in a, a spherical coordinate system the average radiation intensity can be calculated this is a well known formula to us. So, which is equals to 1 by 4 pi the what is the value of theta theta is extended from 0 to pi by 2 theta is equals to 0 to pi by 2 and phi is extended from 0 to 2 pi what is u of theta u of theta is cos power 4 theta sin theta d theta d phi. 
So, uh, this is a, a very simple one, uh, you can easily see calculate this integral. After solving this one, you will get 1 by 10. So, the maximum value of our radiation intensity is 1, the average value of our radiation intensity is 1 by 10. Then what will be the directivity? Directivity is equals to directly 10. But clearly remember this, this was asked in decibels. So, what you are supposed to do is convert this value into decibels. So, the directivity in decibels d in db is equals to 10 log 10 base 10, 10 base 10 is 1 which is equals to 10 db. So, this 10 db is available in option A. So, for this problem option A is correct answer. Problem 9. At 20 gigahertz, the gain of parabolic dish antenna of 1 meter and 70 percent efficiency is option A 15 dB, option B 25 dB, option C 35 dB and option D 45 dB. Now, observe the solution. Before that, just you observe what is the data given to us? It is an operating uh, frequency of our parabolic dish is 20 gigahertz and D is equals to 1 meter, diameter is 1 meter, efficiency is 70 percent and g is equals to how much that is what we require right. For that we are supposed to take the basic formula of g in terms of uh, different different parameters here the most useful formula is g is equals to eta into d that again is equals to eta into d efficiency into directivity. Now, how you can calculate directivity? Directivity can be calculated using its aperture d is equals to 4 pi a e by lambda square that that what we have already we observed that at the time of effective aperture we observed this formula directivity is equal to 4 pi a e by lambda square. Now, how you can calculate the effective aperture? The effective aperture can be calculated using its physical aperture. So, whenever we are considering a parabolic reflector let us consider a parabolic reflector is like this that this is the front cross sectional view of our reflector right this is the front cross sectional view of our reflector whenever we are observing the front cross sectional view of that reflector it just it resembles a circle. So, what is the area of our circle? The physical area S f x p physical area is equals to simply pi r square which is nothing but pi d square by 4. So, whenever, whenever we have a diameter easily can calculate the physical aperture. So, with the help of this physical aperture you can calculate the effective aperture. So, how the physical aperture and effective aperture are related? The effective aperture a e is equals to the aperture efficiency here uh, the many notations will be there here I am using k as the aperture efficiency aperture efficiency multiplied with the physical aperture. What I do is just I will assume that it has a 100 percent aperture efficiency, it is not antenna efficiency, aperture efficiency is 100 percent. So, k is equals to that one I am substituting therefore, a e is equals to a p. So, instead of a e you can write a p here which is equals to 4 pi a p by lambda square. Now, you have d substitute d here. Now, substitu substitution of this d and eta will give you the answer for g. So, directly I will write down the equation for g. How much efficiency we have? Efficiency is 70 percent. 70 percent efficiency means simply 0 0.7 d. d is equals to 4 pi. Instead of a p, I can write pi d square by 4 that is a p divided by lambda square. Lambda can be calculated using your frequency. So, lambda square is nothing but c by f whole square that is c square 9 into 10 power. So, 8 it is 16 divided by f square f is 20 mega h 20 giga h 20 into 20 into 10 power 9 into 10 power 9. Just what I did is I took all the uh, parameters which are available in our uh, problem and substituted here then you will get gain. So, the approximate value after simplification of this one take a calculator and simplify this one the approximate value is 3070 5.4 this is the value of our z, but that is not available in our options. Since the options are given in decibels what you have to do is you have to apply 10 log to this one apply 10 log to this particular value then approximately the gain in decibels can be given as 45 decibels. So, this 45 decibels is available in which option? Option D is correct answer for this problem. Problem 10, a person with receiver is 5 kilometer away from the transmitter. What is the distance that this person must move further to detect a 3 dB decrease in signal strength? Now, observe the solution for this one. Here the problem is given as a person is 5 kilometer away from the transmitter. Transmitter is nothing but an antenna. An antenna is there that let us take this is the antenna location 
from this a person is 5 km away that the distance between the person and antenna is 5 km and how much distance he has to travel further to get a 3 dB decrease in the strength of the signal that he has to move away from the antenna right he has to move some x distance away from the antenna now at this location the signal strength is 3 dB that is minus 3 dB uh, signal strength will be there a 3 dB reduction will be there in the signal strength we are supposed to calculate how much distance he has to move away from the antenna and clearly remember he is not supposed to move towards the antenna if he is moving towards the antenna the signal strength will be increased here he, he is asking about the reduction in the signal strength so this x we are supposed to calculate now what do you mean by 3 dB reduction simply 3 dB reduction is equals to half of the original right so whenever we have input uh, somewhere here then after uh, traveling some distance we are observing 3 dB means the signal strength was reduced to the half. So, let us take P n is at this location P, P input is at this location or P 1 is at this location and P 2 is at this location. So, what is the ratio between P 1 and P 2? P 1 by P 2 is equals to simply 2 right simply it was simply it was halved then clearly you can say that the ratio between the power which is observed exactly at the antenna to the power which is calculated at this distance since the power which is calculated at the distance is half of to the original one p1 by pt is equals to 2. Now, what is the relation between the distances and powers? The power is inversely proportional to the 1 by r square. Already we know the distance uh, relation that p is directly proportional to 1 by r square. So, if you are ignoring the all uh, proportionality constants then you will get a relation like this p1 by p2 is equals to r2 square by r1 square. Now, already we have p1 by p2. What is p1 by p2? p1 by p2 is equals to 2. 2 is equals to r2 by r1 whole square. We are supposed to calculate r1. We know r, uh, r2. We are supposed to calculate r1. r2 is unknown to us. right? So, r2 square divided by what is r1 square? 5 kilometer square. 5 kilometer square. Then simplify this one. After simplification, what we will get is r2 is approximately equals to that this is more than clearly remember this particular value is always more than this 5 kilometer distance. So, it is approximately equals to 7070 meters. So, clearly from the antenna after 7070 meters the signal strength is half of the original right. Now, already the user is at 5 kilometer. Since the user is at 5 kilometer just he has to move extra of 2070 meters right since this 5 kilometer is uh, observation point he has to move an extra distance of 5000 meters that is the distance he has to move is 7070 minus 5000 which is equals to 2070 meters this 2070 is available in which option option b that the option b is the correct answer next right problem 11 for a 2.4 meter parabolic dish antenna operating at 4 gigahertz the minimum distance required for far field measurement is close at 2 option a 7.5 centimeter option b 15 centimeter option c 15 meter and option d 150 meter now observe what is the data given to us the diameter of a parabolic dish is given to us the diameter is 2.4 meter operating frequency is 4 gigahertz and we are supposed to calculate the far field distance from an antenna at which distance or from which distance it will be treated as far field uh, that what we require. So, what is the simple formula for far field distance? We have a formula for far field distance the minimum value is r is equals to 2 d square by lambda. So, greater than this value obviously beyond this value uh, everyone everything is treated as a far field region. So, what is d here? d is the largest dimension of the antenna which is 2.4 meter. So, 2 into 2.4 into 2.4 divided by so, what is lambda here? Lambda is equals to c by f. So, c is 3 into 10 power 8 divided by f is nothing but the operating frequency 4 into 10 power 9. So, a very simple problem that only substitution is given to us that r is equals to 2 d square by lambda is the formula that what we are supposed to remember that beyond this value as everything will be treated as the far field region. Now, take a calculator and simplify this one that is the minimum distance uh, which can be taken as the far field region after simplification approximately you will get 150 meter this 150 meter is available in which option option d so option d is the correct answer 
problem 12 a transmitting antenna radiates 251 watt isotropically a receiving antenna located 100 meter away from the transmitting antenna has an effective aperture of 500 cm square the total power received at the receiver antenna is options are option a 10 microwatt option b 1 microwatt option c 20 microwatt and option d 100 microwatt now observe the solution for this problem here the data given is an antenna is radiating or transmitting a power of 251 watt and the distance between the transmitting antenna and receiving antenna is 100 meters and the effective aperture of the receiving antenna is 500 cm square then how much amount of power will be received by the receiving antenna already we observed this one in our fritz transmission equation that's the basic step of our fritz transmission equation that the power received by the receiving antenna when its effective aperture is given as the power density multiplied with its effective aperture so the power density multiplied with effective aperture always gives us the the power received right so which is equals to what is the power density the power transmitted per unit area of this spherical coordinate system since it was given as isotropically radiating clearly the in that problem it was mentioned that it is uh, radiating isotropically so we are assuming that there is a spherical radiation pattern for the sphere what is the uh, area 4 pi r square multiplied with e r so we have pt that is the power transmitted is 251 which is equals to direct line substituting here 251 divided by 4 pi now what is the distance between them it's r is 100 100 whole square and what is the effective aperture it is given in centimeter square so try to convert that one into meters so 500 into 10 power minus 4 meter square right and uh, this is clearly a e r now after simplification of all these things approximately we will get 100 micro watt so the power which will be received by the receiving antenna after distance of uh, 100 meter is 100 micro watt when the power was transmitted was 251 watt so this is the the entire power was lost because of the attenuation and different different factors at the antennas not only that one because of the effective aperture also so this 100 micro watt is available in which option option d is the correct answer problem 13 in a three element ag antenna option a directly the options are given to us option a all the three elements are equal length option b the driven element and the director are of equal length but the reflector is longer than both option c reflector is longer than driven element which in turn is longer than director option d reflector is longer than driven element which in turn shorter than director now this problem is clearly related to the structure of or the physical construction of our agiwoda array so what is agiwoda array it's just i'll in brief i'll explain what is agiwoda array with the help of a simple diagram so what is agiwoda array agiwoda array is nothing but an array which was proposed by two scientists agi and uda that they gave for the highly directional applications it's a by considering uh, different different elements on an axis it's a like this that what i am showing like this then you will get as the maximum directivity in a particular direction that they arranged a folded dipole like this so this is the folded dipole and for this particular folded dipole the signal will be fed so through a transmission line or a coaxial line so for this folded dipole the signal will be fed that's why it is called as a driven element always clearly remember that this is called as driven element that is nothing but it is driving by the source driven element and then they kept a reflector at some distance on the same axis so this reflector is always has higher length than the driven element so this is called as a reflector simply this reflector is a conductor which is kept as a uh, before our driven element and clearly remember there will be no signal supplied to this reflector and after the driven element they kept a director this is called as a director and using these names you are supposed to remember what are the applications or what are the uses of all these elements this is a driven element which is used to drive our a uh, signal so what are it meant by the signal which is generated in this particular array that is only because of this folded dipole this is a folded dipole and the signal which is generated by this folded dipole will be reflected using the structure that's why this is called as a reflector and this is called as a director which is used to enhance the directivity and re radiate the signal in a particular 
direction. So, this is simply a three element Agiwoda array. If it is required, you can increase number of uh, directors. Another director can be placed here with less length, another director can be placed here with less length than the previous one. Like that, number of directors can be enhanced or increased. Now, what will be the radiation direction for this particular structure? Whenever there is a figure of 8 here, like this, a figure of 8 will be there. This is called as a figure of 8. For a folded dipole, a figure of 8 will be there. That is the radiation pattern. That figure of 8 will be reflected using this reflector again. And that will be redirected using our directors. So, a highly directional signal will be appeared like this. This is a highly directional radiation pattern which can be observed using our Agiwoda array. Now, what is the type of this array? This array is called as end fire array because the along the axis of our array the radiation pattern is there that is what is called as an end fire array. So, in this clearly remember the structure is like this. This is our driven element and this is a reflector and this is our director. You can use more number of directors also. The reflector length is always greater than driven element. The driven element length is always greater than director. The first director length is always greater than second director. And in some of the cases, the lengths of these three elements will be like this. The lengths, this is of 0.5 lambda, that is a, this is a lambda by 2 folded dipole. And a 10 percent of reduction will be there for our director. So, approximately this is 0.475 lambda will be there, the length of our director. And for this one, it is 0.475. 5 phi lambda will be there, that is they are not unique and they are not universal, but that depend upon the uh, uh, application these dimensions may vary. And similarly, we have the specific distance between them that is 0 0.23 lambda will be there here, 0 0.13 lambda, 0 0.1 lambda. So, between the driven element uh, director, driven element and reflector a specific lengths will be there, you are supposed to remember those lengths also if required. So, this is the basic structure of our antenna. Now, in our question, so the options are given purely depend upon the dimensions of our driven element, reflector and director. If you observe all those options, option C is most suitable for this one. In the option C, what is given to us? Reflector is longer than driven element. Obviously, the reflector is longer than driven element and in turn, it is longer than director. It is longer than director also. So, for this particular problem, option C is correct answer. Problem 14, the wave radiated by helical antenna is, options are given like this, linearly polarized, option B, right circularly polarized, option C is left circularly polarized and option D is elliptically polarized. Now, here clearly this is related to the helical antenna. So, prior to answer this question, what I do is just I will give you a brief introduction about helical antenna. What is helical antenna? A helical antenna is an antenna which has a helical structure like this. Just you can imagine a spring. This is called as a circularly wound helical structure. So, a helical structure will be there for a helical antenna, right? This may be a circular helical or a square helical or a rectangular or a triangular, different, different uh, uh, will be there. But here, in most of the cases, a circularly uh, wound helical antenna will be there, right? Now, for this one, a ground plane will be there that with a metallic sheet a ground plane will be placed using this ground plane here the signal will be fed. So, the signal will be fed at this particular location that the construction of our helical antenna is a little bit uh, tricky. What you have to do is you have to uh, uh, take a conductor here and slowly you have to make it as a patch and for that patch using our uh, the coaxial cable the signal will be fed. After that one, uh, so this, these turns will be made according to the design and the operational requirements. Here, what we have is, we have two important parameters that is, one is pitch angle. Here, this angle is called as pitch angle, that is the angle between two turns. So, whenever you are considering two turns, uh, you can expand it or contract it as per a requirement. That, that is purely dependent upon the pitch angle. That pitch angle is nothing but alpha and one complete circumference of our loop is C, that the circumference of our loop is C. Now, the type of polarization is purely depend upon this alpha and C only, that if it is a circularly polarized signal, then this alpha must be equals to tan inverse of the circumference divided by 2 lambda, that clearly the circularly polarized signal 
is uh, applicable if and only if alpha is equals to tan inverse of c by 2 lambda the circumference divided by 2 lambda. If the if this equation is not satisfied then you will not get a circularly polarized signal instead you will get an elliptically polarized signal that the left handed circularly polarized and right handed circularly polarized is also depend upon the terms that what we are considering. So, in the uh, bit that was in, the, in this particular question nothing data is given to us about this pitch angle. Right. Since, no data is given to us uh, related to that pitch angle, in general you are supposed to observe that this is an elliptically polarized antenna. Right. Whenever such type of angle is given to us, if the angle is equal to alpha is equal to tan inverse of c by 2 lambda, directly you are supposed to say that this is a circularly polarized antenna. Otherwise, you are supposed to say that this is elliptically polarized antenna. So, that is given in our option D, that is elliptically polarized signal. So, option D is correct for this particular question. Problem 15. A medium wave radio transmitter operating at a wavelength of 492 meter has a tower antenna of height 124 meter. What is the radiation resistance of antenna? The options are given like this. Option A 25 ohms, option B 36.5 ohms, option C 50 ohms and option D 73 ohms. Now, observe what is the data given to us to solve this problem that a particular antenna, a radio antenna is operating at a wavelength of 492 meter and the antenna has a length of 124 meter. Now, uh, we, we are supposed to calculate the radiation resistance of that one. So, for that just to try to get the relation between these two. So, what is the height of our antenna? The height of antenna is equal to 124 meter, right, which is equal to try to relate it. It is a, it's approximately equal to not exactly approximately equal to 492 divided by 4. Right. So, if you take this 500 divided by 4, you may get 125. Right. So, 492 divided by 4, you may get 124 approximately. So, clearly what you can say is the height of the antenna is equal to h t is equal to lambda by 4. So, simply that particular antenna is a lambda by 4 dipole or a lambda by 4 antenna. For a lambda by 4 antenna, what is the radiation resistance? Directly the radiation resistance of lambda by 4 antenna is 36.5 ohms. Now, what is the radiation resistance of our lambda by 2 antenna? Twice of it. What is the radiation resistance of a folded dipole? 4 times of our lambda by 2 dipole. So, what I do is just I will give you the radiation resistance of the remaining also. The radi radiation resistance of lambda by 2 antenna approximately equals to the twice of this one that is 73 ohms. And the radiation resistance of a folded dipole. So, folded dipole. So, here you are supposed to ask how many foldings are there. If two foldings are there, then simply it is 4 into 73 ohms. If three foldings are there, then 3 square that is 9 into 73 ohms. That the radiation resistance of a folded dipole is depend upon number of foldings. If the number of foldings are n, then clearly remember the radiation resistance of our folded dipole is equals to n square into the radiation resistance of a lambda by 2 dipole. This is a simple formula you can remember. Now, for this particular problem, since our antenna is a lambda by 4 uh, antenna that 36.5 ohms is the answer. This answer is available in which option? Option B. So, this is the answer for this one.